Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our closed loop Lambda control feature we're going to be using in our MoTeC ECU manager software. So the closed loop control is going to allow us to provide a target Lambda value from a table they're going to be programming, and then it's going to allow the MoTeC to look at that and then look at our difference or our actual air fuel and then make a correction based on a bunch of other parameters that we program. So we're going to be looking at the update rate and how much percentage it's going to update per that rate, as well as the amount of control it's allowed to have as far as adding or subtracting fuel. There's going to be a ton of programming information that we have to make sure is done correctly for the closed loop Lambda feature to work. Now the benefit of using this is we're able to put our engine into closed loop control and send it down the racetrack and then we can evaluate the data after we've made a pass or on the road course and figure out how much we have to add or subtract in our fuel to our main fuel table. It's going to provide us a way we can update the table and the engine can be kept in a safe control state and always at the ideal lambda that we want to run the engine at. So it's going to be very useful. It's going to be something you absolutely want to use when you tune with MoTeC. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at all that. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check it out. All right, let's get started here. We're going to be talking about our closed loop Lambda feature we're going to be using for tuning and setup in our MoTeC here. So let's get online. Now, the very first thing we need to keep in mind here is that we're able to use either a Lambda sensor that's built into the MoTeC. So we have a Lambda 1, and if we've enabled the secondary Lambda option, we'll have a Lambda 2. So if we're on a V8 or V6 engine, and we have two banks, we'd want to have two different wideband or Lambda sensors so that we can input both air fuel readings or lambda readings from each bank into the MoTeC so we can control things accordingly. We can see what's going on for our tuning purposes. Now, if we're on inline four and inline six engines, we're going to be going in and just having a single lambda value. Now, if we jump into our lambda window down here, we're going to see LA1, LA2, and these are going to represent the two different channels that are coming in to our MoTeC for those lambda features. So, Right now, we see a, lam a lambda value of 1.57. That's going to signify it's extremely uh, lean. So a value of 1.0 lambda is going to be the stoichiometric for any type of fuel we're going to be tuning on, rather, regardless if it's methanol or gasoline. It's going to have a value of 1.0 if it's at the stoichiometric point. And likewise, if you see the values go below 1.0, so to 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, that's going to signify it's a richer air fuel. So it's going to be just a different scale than what we're used to working with in a gasoline air fuel scale. Now the next thing we can see here is LA control 1, LA control 2. And this is going to tell us if we're in the, the closed loop lambda target control status. So if it's a value of off, we're going to see that it's not actually trimming anything or doing anything. And the value of on signifies that the closed loop is armed and it's going to be looking at a target value based on whatever RPM and load we're at. And it's going to go in and start its trimming. So we can see LA1 STR, this is the short term fuel trim for the Lambda 1 channel, and Lambda 2 channel would be short-term STR, LA2 at short-term Lambda 2. So we're going to be seeing this can have a plus or minus uh, adding or subtracting against the fuel table values. Now, there's a few things that we need to understand or know 